Hey, I'm Joshua and I'm currently building my BMW i80 custom bike. I'm now getting to a point where I need to take out the wheels to fabricate parts, but I still want the bike to be movable because my shed is relatively small. So I've just built myself this workbench. And if you want to build your own workbench, here's how I've done it. So as you can see, I've built this workbench from square metal tubing and some wooden plates. I really like the aesthetics of it, but you need to know how to weld. In case you don't, that's no problem. I've also built a similar workbench from wood ones and I made a video about this that I'm going to link you right here. But before you go, I would recommend you to do a few things differently. First, I would adjust the height of the bench to your own height so that most of the bike is at your chest level. That makes it so much easier to work on the bike. The second thing is that I would upgrade the wheels and also go for more support in the middle. You can basically take the same plan that I've used for building this workbench, but just build it from wood. You can find the plans down below. And then lastly, I would go with a thicker top plate than I did in the other video. So with that, you're off to go. But now on to how you actually build this one from metal. You can find the plans and a list with all you need down below. So that makes it easier for you to follow along. The dimensions of the workbench are 230 by 60 centimeters and the bench in total is 55 centimeters high. That leaves the bike roughly at chest height, which is perfect for working on most things. So I would recommend that you adjust the height of your bench according to your own height. And I would take away storage room for that because it's so much more important to be comfortable when you work on your bike rather than having a little bit more storage. To get the same bench, and this is perfect for the BMW, and I would say the BMW is already relatively big. Material-wise, we start with the square tubing. The square tubing I've used is 30 by 30 millimeters and has a wall thickness of two millimeters. Here in Germany, if you commercially buy steel, you get six meter long square tubes. So I try to stick within that and calculate it all of the pieces in a way that you can cut it out of three times six meters square tubes. I've included a cutting chart in the plans so you exactly know how you have to cut your raw material to get all of your workbench pieces out of that. And then you need at least a top plate. I got two because they only had 60 millimeter thick plates and from my experience with the wooden workbench that I've built I had a 22 millimeter thick top plate there and it felt a little too thin. So what I would recommend you to get is a plate that is as thick as your frame, but at least 30 millimeters. In case you go with a smaller square tube, which I wouldn't recommend, so you get a 30 millimeter or thicker top plate. Since my hardware store didn't have that thickness, I went ahead and got two 60 millimeter thick ones that I'm gonna screw together, which equals 32 millimeters, which is not ideal because it sticks out a little bit below the frame, which adds another step, but we get to that in a bit. And this top plate is as big as the inside dimensions of the top frame because it's gonna sit inside the frame. Compared to that, the bottom plate is a little bigger because it's gonna sit on top of the bottom frame. My bottom plate is also 60 millimeters thick, but only because I realized later that I could have gone for something much thinner. So I would definitely go for something that's more like 10 millimeters or so. Then you need four wheels, make sure that at least two have a brake and that they're made to carry high loads. I also got four D-rings so I can secure the bike on the bench and a bike lift, which is very handy when you have to take out the wheels. Tools wise, you need something to cut the square tubing. I was lucky and could use the machine of my friend, but you can also just use an angle grinder with a cutting disc. You'll also use the angle grinder to clean the tubes. So you need a grinding disc as well. 80 grit or 100 grit is both fine. You'll also need a welder, a drilling machine, a four, eight and 11 millimeter drill, a pen, a center punch, M8 rivet nuts and the corresponding rivet nut pliers, 20 millimeter M8 screws and washers and some Loctite. The first step is to cut all of the tubing into the pieces that you can see in the plan. Some have 45 degree angles. I was super lucky that I could use my friend's machine that made it so much easier and gave me a super nice finish. But if you only have an angle grinder that also works fine, just use a rafter square to mark all the sides when you have to cut straight. And then I found a nice video that shows how to precisely cut 45 degree angles with an angle grinder. And I'm gonna link it right here. And one tip that I can give you for nice precise cuts is to not go through in one go, but actually cut each side individually. That will give you a much nicer finish. Step two is to clean the material. Mine was super rusty, so I had to go over all of it with the angle grinder and the grinding disc. If yours looks okay, you only need to make sure that the areas where you're gonna weld it 
are very, very clean. So take it down to the bare shiny matter. All right, now that you have all the pieces, this is what it looks like. The layout is actually relatively simple. We have a top frame, the bottom frame, both have the middle pieces and then eight legs that connect the two frames. On the bottom frame, we're gonna add little brackets in the corner or you could also add some thicker steel plates in those areas that we can later attach the wheels to. The next step now is to tack the frames together and I use these 90 degree magnets to hold the pieces in place. So I started by tacking the bottom frame together on the floor. So I first did one side, then I flipped it over, did the other side. And I do need to give you a little disclaimer at this point because as you can see here, my choice of welder isn't the most practical one. I've just learned how to tick weld and I wanted to take this as a good practice opportunity because there are so many welds on this thing that you have to weld in different orientations and it's just a good challenge for me. So it basically comes down to which welder you have but if you're building your own and you have a MIG welder I would suggest you just weld everything up on the floor. It's gonna be level, gonna be so much easier. But anyways, I'm going to take the extra challenge to get better TIG welding. So once the bottom frame was tacked together, I put it on my table and welded everything up completely. All right, the first frame is welded together. What I noticed once the outside was done when I wanted to weld in the middle pieces was that it deformed a little bit and the middle was actually now a little bit narrower. So I would try to push it apart, but that was relatively hard. I did get it in the end, but an easier method is if that happens to you to just put the pieces in at a slight angle and then use a rubber hammer to push them in place. Once they were in place, I also welded those up. And again, make sure that all of the areas that you weld on are very, very clean. So now we can move on to these little corner pieces. I'm gonna weld all four together like so, and then put them in place afterwards. All right, I've just finished these four corner pieces that will now go on the inside corners of the bottom frame. With everything that you weld together, make sure that you put proper tags on all sides because as we've seen with the other parts, if you weld before tacking everything up, it can happen that they kind of move, bend, stuff like that. Once the bottom frame was done, I moved on to the top frame. And with the top frame, there's actually something special. The middle pieces are not gonna be welded to the frame, but a little bit lower to the middle legs. Right, on the second try, I'm just gonna put those in before tacking everything together so that the frame doesn't deform that much and it worked very well. So now that the top and the bottom frame are done, it's time to attach the legs to the bottom frame. I again use the 90 degree magnets to hold the legs in place and a spirit level to make sure that it's straight from all sides. I also checked with the rafter square from the outside of the frame that the leg actually sits flush with it. And then I started tacking the leg in place. After the first tags on one side, I double checked if it's still straight because at this point, it's still relatively easy to bend it back in case it moved. And then I put two tags on the opposite side that keeps it relatively straight. And then I just tacked up the rest. Putting the legs on is actually quite tedious but it definitely pays off to take your time here and make sure that everything is straight. Once all the eight legs are tacked into place I grab the bottom plate and put it on top of the eight legs. Now it's still easy to mark the areas that need to be cut out for the plate to actually slide over the legs. Once you have aligned the outside corners of the plate with the legs, just mark all of the eight legs and then you know where you have to cut. I don't have a lot of woodworking tools, I'm just gonna use my angle grinder with this multi-purpose cutting disc. And since you can't read any of the information that was on there, I'm gonna link it down below with all of the other things that I've used. When you cut out these gaps, I would actually recommend to go a little bit bigger than what you've drawn. It's gonna make your life a little bit easier and I guess nobody really will notice. Once you have the cutouts done, check whether the plate actually fits, make any adjustments if you need. And then before I put this in permanently now, I'm gonna take it out again and weld on the top frame because I think I should be able to put it in later square. If I push it in like this, that should fit technically. And here's a little disclaimer to my approach. I got very lucky in the end because what I didn't have in mind is that this outer square is bigger than the inner square because this tube actually sits lower. So this just 
barely fits through there. So definitely double check depending on your height and the plate thickness that you get if that is actually going to work. Otherwise, you just put it in right now and then you weld the top frame on while the bottom plate is already in place. That will make everything a little bit heavier and maybe a little bit harder to weld, but at least you'll have your bottom plate in. So you need to see which way you want to go. I've marked my plate and the frame so I know which side actually goes where in the end. How I progressed was that I took the bottom plate out, put it aside and started tacking the top frame to the legs now. All right, let's see how this fits. Obviously, since I didn't really have a lot of fixtures in place, my fitment was kind of okay. The first two legs were pretty easy, but for the other two, I had to manipulate them into place. And what really helped me was to use a screwdriver to hold the leg in place and then use a square tube that I would clamp onto the frame so I could remove the screwdriver and the leg would stay in place. That worked very well and I had no issues with the fitment afterwards. If you use clamps, don't leave on the plastic cap. Once the four outside legs were tacked into place, I moved on to the four middle legs. And to have those sit flush with the frame, I used the middle square pieces of the top frame, pushed them in, and I placed them right at the gap between the top end of the legs and the top frame. And that way we have a very good fitment here and also on the other side. And I could tack up the three sides, take out the middle piece and then tack up the last side. Once everything was tacked into place, it was time to weld up all the connections. That took quite a while, but it was good practice. Now you have the complete frame done, which is super nice because we can move on to the top plate. Since I got two plates, I quickly need to screw those together. I made sure that I had the nicest looking side facing up and screw them together from the bottom so you don't see the screws when you look at it from the top. Next, I put the frame on top of the plates while the plates laid flat on my table. So I put the frame on upside down. So on this side, it basically slides over the plate. And then we move along and here we have slight issues with the fitment. I measured very, very precisely the insides of my frame and I actually wouldn't recommend you to do that. Give yourself two millimeters of air all around. That will make your life so much easier because my plate ended up to be one millimeter too long after welding. That side is on. So now it's only matter of getting this side to fit. So I had to adjust the plate with my very rudimentary woodworking tools. I used a little strip of sheet metal to guide the multi-purpose disc on my angle grinder, but that was still not enough. So in a very basic fashion, I took out the chisel and just chiseled away until it fit. All right, the bottom plate is finally in. What a struggle. At this point, we can now weld in the top support pieces in the middle. So just push them in place and weld those up. But since the top plate now only has these two support pieces, I decided to make a few brackets that then go all around and support the plate. All right, I've cut all of the pieces, eight from both of the thicknesses. These are two millimeters thick and two centimeters by 15 centimeters and those are four millimeters thick and four centimeters by 15 centimeters i'm now going to quickly weld all of them together like so and here's the extra step that i've mentioned because my plate sticks out two millimeters i had to add these two millimeter thick plates to the four millimeter brackets that i wanted to weld on the frame so if you want to do it perfectly just get the same height of top plate as your frame is high and then you have no issues. You can weld on these support brackets right onto the frame and don't have to add any spaces. All of the eight support pieces are welded together. The next step is to put those in place. If you do this and you've got a plate that fits easily into the frame, I would actually suggest to take it out at this point, weld the supports in and then drop the plate back into the frame. Well, with my fitment, that's kind of hard to do. So I'm gonna skip that. All of the support brackets are fitted to the frame. That took a while because I had to make sure that I don't burn away too much 
of the plate. After the brackets are all in place, we are almost done. The next two steps are to attach the wheels and the latches. And to get stronger threads, I'm gonna use rivet nuts because look at the difference in thread size that you get. If you cut the thread right into the tube, you only get like two turns, but with a rivet nut, you get a proper strong thread. You can actually go for one of the relatively cheap rivet nut sets on Amazon that works perfectly fine. I have the same, but how does it work? You start by placing the wheel or the latch on the area that you want to attach it to. Then you mark where the holes need to go. Center punch on those dots so your drills have a good starting point. Use some drilling oil and then for the M8 rivet nuts, we need to drill holes all the way up to 11 millimeters. Once you have the holes, you can put the rivet nuts in place and you do that by opening up the rivet nut pliers and then screw on the rivet nut. Once it's completely on the thread, you can insert it into the hole and then just push the pliers together and that puts it into place. To release the pliers from the thread, just unscrew them with this wheel. Once you have all the rivet nuts in place, you can put a washer on your screw, put some Loctite on the thread and then tighten down your wheels. If you have wheels where two come with a brake and two without, make sure that you put the ones with a brake on the same side. This side has brakes, this side has no brakes. Once the wheels are on the bottom frame, we can repeat the same process to attach the D-rings. And I decided to paint mine black in the end because they were just too shiny for the overall look of the bench. The last step is to slide in the bottom plate if you don't have it in place already. And as I've said, I got really, really lucky that I could still put it in. So make sure that you double check that. And now congratulations, you've built your own workbench. Let me quickly run you through how much this project has cost. All of the square tubing was 70 euros. The top and the bottom plate were 45 together. The wheels 25 together and the latches 10. So the whole bench cost 150 euros, which I feel is very, very fair. I was actually surprised there wasn't more. And the bike lift, if you want to go for the same one, that's 50 bucks. That's actually one of the cheapest that I could find out there. And there are companies that sell this for 120 euros. So I hope it's relatively good quality, but I need to test it first and then I'm gonna do a review in the future. And if you now feel a little bit uneasy about all the welding you have to do with this project, I get it, I've just learned how to take weld. So if you want to build a workbench without the need to weld, check out this video next. If you do the little changes that I've told you about in the beginning of the video, that's also a very viable option. So good luck with whatever type you choose. As always, thank you very much for watching and I see you in the next one.